readers, it's Miss Julie here. I thought I would make a little read aloud video with a new book that we just got in. This is Elmore and Pinky, and it's by Holly Hobby. And this new book is about Elmore trying to find his best friend. And we want to thank the Random House for letting us read this book today. What pretty end papers with the dandelions in the grass field. So let's see if Elmore finds a best friend. Our first page doesn't have any words in it. I see Elmore, I see a bullfrog and cattails, and I see a little skunk. I think the skunk's name is Pinky. Elmore had plenty of friends. He lived alone, but he wasn't lonely. He seldom left his dwelling without being greeted by a pleasant neighbor. It gave him a warm feeling, but still he felt something was missing. A best friend was missing. Oh God. It's the raccoons in the apple tree. It's Elmore is a porcupine. A companion, his uncle suggested, helping Elmer over a big word. Yes, a companion, Elmore repeated. That's exactly what I mean. Having a bunch of friendly neighbors is not the same as having a best friend. Elmore thought this over, then asked, how do you get one? Well, it just happens, his uncle told him. You'll know. One afternoon, while Elmore was enjoying a sunny moment, Pinky the skunk came waddling along. What a beautiful day, Elmore. Can I join you? asked Pinky. Please do, said Elmore. I hear you are looking for a best friend. How will you find one? Pinky asked. Well, according to my uncle, it just happens. There's little bunnies in the background. Well, if you're nocturnal, your best friend would have to stay up all night, too, whispered Pinky. Definitely, Elmore agreed. He might be out in the woods right now. It's not happening, Elmore admitted to his uncle. There don't seem to be any spare best friends around. Maybe you're looking too hard, his uncle said. Be patient. There is a friend for everyone. The next day, while Elmore was contentedly picking blueberries, a bear cub came tumbling toward him, eager to play. Stay back, Elmore cried. You'll get stuck with my quills. Stay back. But the cub kept coming, running circles around Elmore. Help! Elmore shouted. I don't think Elmer, Elmore wanted to hurt the black bear cub. But in his worry, look, his quills came out. With a sudden great commotion, the mother bear burst through some branches. Nothing was more fierce, Elmore knew, than a mother bear protecting her cub. Help, he shouted louder than before. Responding to danger, his body arched into a prickly ball. Help! And Elmore just wanted to protect the bear cub. Then he saw Pinky enter the fray, and an unmistakable scent filled the air. So Pinky might be a little stinky, but you always know he's coming. Pinky, cried Elmore, is that you? Snatching up her cub, the mother bear vanished into the woods. Oh, look, Elmore's quills went down. He's not scared anymore. Maybe because Pinky came on the scene. And look, Pinky's got his hand on his back to comfort him. And he's not getting stuck. You were so brave, Elmore said. You saved me. Bears can't stand the smell of skunk, Pinky said. It makes them faint. I like it, Elmore told him. 
It's so you. Oh, that's a sweet picture, isn't it? Elmore's blueberry pie came out beautifully, but this was where the best friend came in. More than half the pleasure of a blueberry pie was sharing it. He couldn't wait for Pinky to taste it. See, he's thinking of Pinky while he's making his blueberry pie. And Elmore suddenly paused. Yes, he definitely wanted Pinky to be the first to taste it. What did that mean? He asked himself. Pinky was grooming himself near the old fallen birch tree he lived in. You're so clever and kind, Elmore told him. Why don't you have a special friend? No one wants to be best friends with the skunk, Pinky said. I stink. Only in emergencies, Elmore said. But guess what? I found my best friend. He was right under my nose all along. Well, I can't wait to meet him, said Pinky. It's you, Elmore exclaimed. That is, if you'd like me to be your best friend too. It just happened like you said it would, Elmore told his uncle. You make a pair, his uncle told them. Oh, enjoying blueberry pie. I love being nocturnal, Elmore said. And Pinky agreed. And there they go. Best friends walking off hand in hand. What? What was that, Punky? You're you're disappointed you're disappointed? You're upset? This is Punky Possum, and he lives here with uh, Dougie Dragon. And Punky, you like the book okay, but there was no possum, right? There were raccoons, there was a frog, there was black bears and bunnies, but no possum? I don't want you to feel left out. You, you want me to read a picture book with a possum? You want me to write a picture book about Punky Possum? Well, how about for now we just get a book? about a possum and we'll, we'll work on the creative process later. Yeah? Okay. All right, I'll be back. I'm gonna go get a book about a possum for Punky. Well, there is a book called Don't Laugh Joe that features a possum, but it's checked out so I can't read it. Did you know that you can still check out books at the library even though the building is uh, closed? You definitely can. Call the number below 10 to 6, Monday through Saturday, and the children's team would be happy to pull books for you on any topic, and also great read-alouds and picture books and chapter books, too. Oh, and we can just pull a mix of books, too. If you want 50 picture books, we can get them for you. What? Yeah, Don't Laugh Joe is a great book. It has a possum in it, but some child is reading it, which is wonderful. And you want the kids to learn about po Okay, nonfiction book. Okay, let me go see if there's a nonfiction book about possums in. I'll be back. All right, Punky, here's your book about a possum. This is a newer nonfiction book that we have in a wonderful series called Wild America. And we want to thank Thompson Gale for letting us read it today. And we're going to just dive in and out of it. We're not going to read the whole book. So let's start with the introduction. The opossum is one of the oldest living mammals in the world. Really? Opossums have been on Earth for 70 to 80 million years. That's a long time. This means they lived at the same time as Tyrannosaurus rex. Opossums are a kind of mammal called marsupials. They belong to the order marsupiala. Like all mammals, marsupials give birth to live young. But what makes marsupials unique are the pouches that females have on the outside of their bodies. There are nearly 270 different species of marsupials in the world. Most, such as kangaroos, koalas, and wallabies, live in Australia, New Guinea, and islands in the Pacific Ocean. 
So here's our North American marsupial, the opossum, but we've got koala, kangaroo, and what would I say? Wallaby, yes. Okay, the opossum lives in a wide range of habitats, including farmland, woodland, and even neighborhoods. I am sure there are possums in Bexley and in the city. They usually live in an area of about 95 acres, but often wander farther when they search for food. Opossums are ground dwellers, but they are excellent climbers too. Trees provide opossums with food, as well as places to escape predators, animals that hunt any other animals. That's a predator. A Tyrannosaurus rex, a predator. Within its home range, an opossum makes several nests or dens. They may be high in trees or may be close to the ground in tree hollows. Opossums also make homes in abandoned nests or burrows of other animals. The opossum's body is long and slender. It has thick, soft, furry undercoat with a top coat of long, coarse hairs. Okay. Definitely have that. Some opossums live in southern regions, can be blackish in color. And like all marsupials, female opossums have a pouch to carry their young. Virginia opossums are the largest. They weigh between four and 14 pounds. They have triangular white faces, large round furless ears rimmed with black, and their eyes are ringed with black markings. Opossums have excellent night vision, as well as keen senses of hearing and smell. Their noses are long, pink, and pointed, and not covered in fur. Sensitive whiskers vibrate to help their sense of touch. Not the cutest thing in the world. You know that, Punky? Their large mouths can open wide to eat a variety of foods, as well as to show off all their sharp teeth. Opossums have 50 teeth, more than any other North American land animal. So a possum has more teeth than a bear, or a wolverine, or a wolf, or a coyote probably because they eat so many different things. You need a lot of teeth to eat a lot of different kinds of food, I suppose. Each front paw has five long toes with claws, and each back paw has four clawed toes, but they're too short for possums to dig very well. And the back paws have a fifth thumb-like toe, and they use these special toes to climb and grab objects. Oh, it almost looked like a snake for a minute, but it's the opossum's tail. They have tails that are designed to grab onto things, and these tails are called prehensile tails because they can do stuff like that, prehensile tails. So more teeth than any other North American animal, crazy clawed toes to climb and grasp, and a prehensile tail so they can hang upside down. Although the tail is strong enough to help hold the animal's weight if needed, an opossum normally uses its prehensile tail to balance, to grasp tree branches while it climbs, and to scoop and carry nest materials. Its tail is long and pink with black coloring at the base. It does not have any hair, just a little bit at the base. Opossums are nocturnal, nocturnal animals. They sleep during the day or active at night. Opossums prefer to live on their own and they are not very territorial. They do not mind if they have to share space with other wild animals. Because opossums do not run very fast, they have adapted other ways to protect themselves. They are generally quiet animals, but they will growl or hiss if threatened. An opossum will bear its sharp teeth to scare off a predator. It may also drool to make itself look sick because he wants to eat a sick animal. Uh, and if all else fails, they can play possum. And this refers to an effective way opossums protect themselves. They play dead. They curl up on the ground and stay perfectly still to discourage predators such as dogs, cats, coyotes, or gray horned owls. Most animals will not attack a dead animal, so the predator usually gives up and leaves. An opossum can play dead for a few minutes or for as long as several hours. When it plays dead, an opossum does not just pretend 
Its body actually sends a substance into the bloodstream that causes its muscles to contract, and stiffen up. And, wait, it's dead. This effect does not wear off until the danger is gone. Like all nocturnal animals, opossums hunt at night. Their keen hearing, eyesight, and sense of smell help them function well in the dark. They can live in many different habitats because they adapt to their environment and eat whatever foods are available. Their diet consists of a wide range of foods, including fruit, nuts, insects, snails, frogs, crayfish, small rodents, and bird eggs. Some opossums that live in tropical climates like Central and South America eat mainly fruit and nectar. North America's Virginia opossum, on the other hand, is omnivorous, which means eats anything and everything he can find. This means it eats both animals and plants. Some opossums will even eat carrion, or dead animals, and any other food they might find as they rummage through neighborhood garbage cans. So, opossums found a dead rabbit, and I guess that's what's gonna be for dinner. Do you ever brush your teeth? Do you ever brush off 50 of your teeth, Cupcakes? Oh, look at these cute little babies. The average opossum litter is made up of eight to nine babies. They look just like little possums, except for when they're first born, baby possums look like this. Opossum babies are called joeys. The babies of kangaroos and koalas are also called joeys. An opossum may have more than 20 babies in a litter, but the average is eight or nine. Joeys are extremely small at birth. They weigh less than one ounce and are only about a half inch long, tiny. Many of these newborns together could fit in a teaspoon. The babies are born deaf, blind, and furless, and they depend completely on their mother. As soon as they are born, these tiny pink babies have to make a difficult climb through their mother's fur to reach her pouch. There they will nurse and grow in safety. So here they are in, their, in the pouch. In order to survive, a baby must make it to the pouch and latch onto one of the mother's teeth so they can eat and be safe. If a joey does not attach, it will die. And if a mother has more than 13 babies, they have to compete for the milk. Joeys nurse inside the pouch for two to four months. Their eyes open after 55 to 70 days. So their eyes are shut for like two months. So it's a long time to get from this uh, this. Once they leave the pouch for good, joeys travel on their mother's back for another two months. To stay on, they grasp her fur with their claws and teeth, and they watch their mother search for food and avoid predators. They learn important survival skills. Oh, look how little possums on her. I think being a mom of possum is a tough job. The babies are ready to go off on their own around this time, although some will stay with their mother until they're about a year old. This is a long time, considering that opossums usually live only a year or two in the wild. If a mother with babies on her back is threatened by a predator, she may hiss or growl, but she will not play dead because to do so would put her babies in too much danger. Mother and babies have special ways to communicate with each other. If a baby opossum is separated from its mother, it makes a sneezing sound to attract her attention. And in a turn, the mother makes a clicking sound to signal to her lost joey. Some people think opossums are pests because they sometimes raid chicken coops and cornfields, but they can be helpful to humans. They eat snails and gardens, but do not disturb the plants. They eat all kinds of bugs, including crickets, cockroaches, and beetles. They help keep the insect population down, and they also hunt small rodents such as mice and rats, which carry diseases that can be harmful to humans. Opossums greatly benefit neighborhoods as they get rid of pests and clean up rotten fruit that has fallen to the ground. But an opossum will occasionally eat pet food that has been left out for the night.
Well, those are some nice pictures of opossums, and we learned a lot about them. Well, thanks for sticking with us today. I hope you enjoy Punky Possum Special Storytime. Give us a call. We'll get books for you to read at home. Thanks.